Hi guys and welcome back. Today I had planned a video about metal casting, specifically aluminum casting, but the casting failed so I had to do something else and this is a project I've been wanting to do for a long time because I really need it when I record voiceover and such. So here you go, we are making like a boom arm for my Rode NT USB microphone and of course you can just buy one from Amazon like for 30 euros or so. But to me they look just like an IKEA lamp and this one in particular was only like 8 euro. So, you know, just for the fun of it I want to make this my own. First thing first I need to take off the power cord from the lamp and also of course the lamp head. And right now I'm trying to figure out what's the best way to attach the microphone to this arm. And this hinge that there was on the lamp already is looking really solid to me. So I want to see if I can reuse that to attach the holder of my microphone. Of course, when I have to make something like a 3D model, I immediately go and check on Thingiverse, because there is probably someone that already did something like this. And of course I found the exact thing that I wanted to make. I really think this shock mount looks absolutely great, but the mounting solution is not what I have in mind. So I kept searching, I looked for IKEA lamp, always on Thingiverse. And of course I found another microphone shock mount for the IKEA lamp, just like I wanted to make in the first place. But yeah, I still think the other one looked a lot better. So I will see if I can combine these two. And to do so I will use Autodesk Maya, that is a modeling software. To start off I imported the model that I like. And as I said I have to remove this mounting solution. So I just selected all the faces and deleted them and then I filled the hole and it's very simple, a couple of commands. Then I also imported the other microphone shock mount and I did the exact same thing, I just selected this time what I didn't wanted and then I deleted everything and I filled the holes. And now it's just a matter of combining these two pieces. I slightly modified the hinge attachment so that it could print without support. And then I merge the two objects into one so that I can print it. I used the Creality CR10 to print this in PLA at 0.2 mm layer height with 30% infill and a speed of around 60 mm per second. And this took around 8 hours, so not that bad. Now I am removing the brim that I added to help the parts stick to the bed and I also cleaned a couple of blobs here and there with a utility knife. So to hold the microphone inside there I am just using some hair bands and these are what should block vibration going from the table or the arm to the microphone so that they don't get picked up when you are recording. And again I like a lot this design works perfectly. I had to swap out the band that was holding the microphone because it wasn't strong enough. But fortunately I have quite a good selection of hair bands, so I was able to find one that was strong enough to hold the microphone securely. So now we can just mount with two bolts and nuts the shock mount to the lamp and it's all done, right? And of course not, because now the pop filter doesn't fit anymore. It had like a very short arm, so let's say I was expecting that. But fortunately there is a very simple and elegant solution to fix this problem. And that is to model a very simple extension that can move out the pop filter just a couple of centimeters. So to model this I'm using Fusion 360, always from Autodesk. And to model this I just started with the circumference of the two elements that I already have. Then I made a couple of offset of the circumference and I connected both with a nice curve. Now I have to make like a nut to lock the pop filter. So again, always starting from those two circumference that I had, I'm making like a ring and I threading the inside. And since I want to be able to tighten this by hand, I decided to try and make some knurling on the outside. And to do so I just used the spiral tool that cut a groove on the outside 
then I just had to mirror these elements and then repeat these in a circular pattern like 15 times or so and this should help to give some grip to this nut and of course I forgot to actually model the thread instead of just displaying them so I went back and I did that and I also got wrong the distance between these two circumference so I just cut the model in half separated by the right amount and then connected the two surfaces with a loft so now it's all done, we can print it again on the CR10, this time at 0.1 mm layer height to give a better resolution to the thread and the knurling. And this is how they came out! I really like how these turned out and they fit great, so everything is fine for this time. And this is my workstation, so I just used that kind of clamp that came with the lamp. And just like that it's very easy to set the microphone at whatever distance or angle you like. So yeah, right now for the first time I am using it how it's supposed to be used, like at 15 cm from my mouth. So it's finally sounding like it's supposed to be. And by the way I really like this microphone, I think it works really well. So that's it for this one guys, I hope you somewhat enjoyed this filler video. Now I get back to work at some metal casting so we will hopefully have that done very very soon. Thank you a lot for watching guys, see you next time, bye bye.